ends the cipher. Prepare for another all night. On the talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. Hang in there, sit tight. Phone number here at the station is 773-591-1690 to 773-591-1690. You can also listen online at WVON.com. Go there and click on the iHeartRadio icon and get some crystal clear sports cipher in your ear. You can also follow the show on Twitter at the sports cipher and that's cipher with a Y. Why not? <laughs> and you can also like our Facebook page as well. That's Facebook.com backslash sports cipher we are on instagram that's instagram.com backslash sports cipher and also we're all over youtube as well you know some uh nice looking people mainly me mainly you yes, yes. i was gonna yes. say log on watch the youtube channel to see farouk <laughs> that's what you need to do because i'm stop it i'll put a disclaimer on me because half the time nah, i look straight crazy nah, nah. so i admit it because that's why i'm on radio <laughs> nah. they're, they're, they're loving my they're like dude who is that Who's that chick you host the show with? These are cutie. Somebody call me a chick? Yeah. You know, I know white people. So, you know, they say chick. <laughs> so, you know. But, yeah, the Bears play Friday. They play football. It wasn't, like, really, you know, good-looking football, but they played it. First game of the season, and it's the unofficial season. It's the preseason. I don't think that you should look at that game and say it was good or bad. I mean, there were some bad things that obviously transpired, but there were some things that were okay as well. So for all the people who have their panties in a bunch, take a deep breath. It's going to be all right. I agree. Uh, even though you got to admit, though, the very first offensive play, <laughs> Cutler comes out there and throws a pick. You got to kind of wonder, be wondering, but like, wow, is, it, is wait, this wait. how it's going to start? Is this how it's going to go? You, you can't know? really say that that pick was 100% on Cutler. You can't say that because it's the way – I mean, pretty much he was leading the pass to uh-huh. where, you know, he assumed the Jeffries was going to be, and that didn't happen. Right there, but that's something about that particular cut is he, you know, last few years he's been here, he's never really taken credit for stuff like that. It's always been on everybody else. So he kind of took credit a little well, bit there. I think you are seeing the impact of what Mark Tressman will do with Jay Cutler. He will clearly make him a better – I'm telling you, my one proclamation on this year will be this, not just because it's a contract year for Jay Cutler – this will be the best season you will see him have because, one, finally you have a coach that is offensive-minded that will understand how to work to his advantage. This will be a good season for him, and it needs to be a good season for him for lots of other reasons as well. And it's interesting because there were lots of polls going out, and I'd be curious what people think. What are your thoughts to the show? 773-591-1690. What would the Bears' record be? Will it be better than the 10-6? and Because, you know, people are still very baffled that you can be 10-6 and and not make the playoffs, but it is what it is. But you have some people who are still holding on to Lovey Smith. I mean, it's just they can't, they can't seem to let it go for some reason. And they, they feel like, oh, the Bears, you know, one person was like, oh, the Bears are going to be last in their division. And I'm like, did I, did I miss something? Understandably, Green Bay has made some major changes. Detroit has made changes. And, yes, the Bears have made a lot of changes as well. But I don't, I, by no means do I feel they're not a contender in this division, I'd be curious what, what people think, their thoughts. I feel they can be better than 10-6. and six. I'll give them 11-5. and five. They threw a poll out during the game, they and did. like 37% of the people said 12 wins are better. And it was, it was really the top two vote-getters were that, and I think 11, 11 wins. That's and then like the third one was less than seven wins. Right, which would be absolutely ridiculous. I will say this, though. The one thing that I wanted to see in that game is I wanted to see John Bostic who, first of all, I think has the best name going. Bostic just sounds like you play football. And he comes from a good pedigree as well. But I wanted to see how he was going to look at middle linebacker. The speed was great. I mean, he looked – I mean, it was odd not seeing Erlacher on the sidelines. But question, did you miss him? Who? Exactly. I mean, Bostic made it look that exciting. You know, for the, for the time that he was in there, Briggs looks good. It's a chance for him to put a stamp on that defense. The defense, Mel Tucker, who was somebody I would love to have on the show and chat to him about kind of where his mind is. Because, you know, they kind of – I think when they, when they started um, the, their first sequence defensively, it was nice to see they weren't in a cover two. <laughs> it was wonderful. Right, right. You know. But, so, and, um, we were talking here in the studio on Friday during the pregame, and they were showing Tucker. And we was like, wow, this dude, we thought he was a player. Just looking at him, he was being interviewed. He he really has a youthful look. So yes, he does. But I was like, yeah, I th- I think he'd be great to get on here to kind of just you know talk about how the fact that they're not really doing everything that you know the past regime did defensively, like a lot of people say that they're gonna do. Well, here's the thing too. 
that game you watched on Friday was very vanilla. By no means did you look at that and even believe that that was a barometer of what you're going to see all season long with them because you're not. I mean, Tressman put everybody – I mean, this is a time to evaluate talent, to figure out how you're going to get down to that, that 90-man roster. You know, and I even like the fact that even after Jay Cutler threw an interception, Tressman put him right back out there. He's like, he needs to get back out there, get a rhythm. Th- that's not the final thought I want you to have of your opening drive starting out the season. That was unconventional, and I enjoy that that he's willing to kind of step outside the mold and do some different things. And I think that's what you're going to see from them offensively. A lot of it, I mean, like you said, it was vanilla, but a lot of it kind of looked like um, those really quick, like West Coast type of yes. old, old regime. Who was the offensive coordinator before March? Um, Turner. Turner. A lot of that type of stuff, which I guess, it, I mean, it works. It's won titles, but it works if, you know, it's executed properly. But hopefully it's not one of those things where, along with Mike Martz's offense, it's kind of like a dinosaur where, you know, it's easy to defend and all that. So I, ho- I hope that won't be the case with the offense because uh, I, that wouldn't be a good thing, obviously. Part of what, <laughs> besides the fact that everyone said that Martz, his, his playbook was, was so dynamic and so big and took a lot for players to wrap their minds around it, but the other side of that was a lot of what Mike Martz did was timing routes, which – that's something to me, and I, and I hope that's not the direction they want to go. So when Jay Cutler was talking about the in, initial interception, it was about kind of leading. Jeffries yeah, some of the stuff was timing as was well. Was timing where he should have been. The problem with that is if, if, you're, if you don't have a rhythm or kind of like the balance or synchronicity that Cutler has with, with Marshall, they're, they're very much on the same page. Often you can do those things because they're symbiotic. But unfortunately, with Alshon Jeffries going out and being injured, he didn't get to build that type of same relationship with Jay Cutler. I mean, I think everybody is looking forward to what he can do this year if he stays healthy. But using timing routes with him, I don't think that's a good thing. Not at this point, but we'll see. Well, something that um, you know the commentators were saying during the game is it's going to be, particularly Jim Miller was saying, it's going to be at least week two or week three at the earliest before they're really hitting on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. Now, is that something, though? I don't think that's something with a 16-game schedule you kind of have the luxury of being able to have happen. That's something you kind of want to hit the ground running against Cincinnati with this thing is really what I'm saying. I know they've had a lot of struggles down there, you know, in Bourbon A and everything with the interceptions and guys really not picking up the offense yet. I, don't, I hope that's not the case. I hope it's not week three when they finally get it and you're sitting on an 0-2 record trying to, you know, dig out of a – that's a big hole in no, the NFL, yeah. hole or two. You know, it's not something – It. I think what you have to look at this game, and you, you just have to say that, for instance, they're not practicing with pads. Obviously, you're going up against a different team, and, and the overall strategy is, is more specific to what they're trying to achieve, which is a win. So that's why I'm like, take the first game and chalk it up because, you know, you've got to get, the, you know, kind of the butterflies out. You know, you get, the physicality is there. But once again, the defense looked great. The O-line, another question mark. We, we talked about Jamarcus Webb. We've been talking about – what Jamarcus Webb never does correct for how long now? But I, I, I guarantee you on this, and I, I, put, I would put money on this, if he has a continuation of the kind of seasons he's had in the past, he will not be here come next year. No, he won't make it to opening day <laughs> if he keeps on what like he did the other night. Because but I think overall, the offensive line, I mean, it didn't look that bad. Besides, I mean, with a guy like that, he can make the rest of the line look bad. But right. you, you can kind of see some uh, development a little bit there. But – it's improvement. I think they're going to be better than they were last year. And like I said, look, you, may, you may be exactly on point. It is highly probable if Webb does not get it together because you had someone like Jonathan Scott last year who did great for the snaps he took in the game. So realistically, if he doesn't get it together, he may not be a starter. And I don't have an issue with that because at this point, the development curve has definitely been steep enough for him that coming out in an opening series, you're not a rookie. For him to still look the way he looks or for people to blow past him – I just don't get that. And this regime doesn't have the allegiance that, you know, the old guys did. So I can't – they're not going to put up with four or five games of that. They'll, they'll let him go long before the season starts if that type of nonsense continues. So, yeah, so. I'm, not, I'm not worried about Jamarcus Webb, actually. That's why, to me, I'm not really that worked up about it because he'll play himself right out of town, you know, if well, that kind of keeps up. He's been doing that for a minute. But the, the, the difference with – and one thing that Jay Cutler had said on several occasions is that with Emory and with Tressman's, everybody's working for their job. I like to hear that. I like I like to, to know that outside of Cutler, because pretty much his job is secure. I mean, that's a given. Eh, I, I don't think eh. I don't think they're going to pull him to put in Josh McCown. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. So his job is pretty much it's secure. But I like the fact that there's an accountability being given to this team that you're going to earn the right to be on the field. 
And I think that's why a lot of people are maybe, you know, having a little bit of a hard time warming up to Tressman or even Emery because they realize that they're now being held accountable. But this should have been going on a long time ago. That's why a change was absolutely necessary. So.